And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, my name is Tom Vassell and today I'm taking a look at Codex, the deluxe set, and a little bit more of an in-depth look at Codex to some degree. Now, before we get into this review, please, please go watch the Double Trouble review that Melody and I did. There I explain how to play Codex and we tell you what we think of the game. Spoilers, we both really really enjoyed this game. So here I'm going to show you what comes in this deluxe set. So when you buy Codex, you can buy a small pack, a core pack, or the deluxe set. Uh, the deluxe set is really expensive. I think it's like $175. It's very, very pricey. However, you do get a ton of game in there. That's like going out and buying all the Magic Starter decks for two years, like mixed together. There's a lot of stuff in this set. So while I'd be hesitant to throw that much money that one time, you can buy the core, the core set, which is red versus green, and then add in the other colors if you want to. So there are ways to do that. There are no other things coming with this game. So if you buy the core set, you never have to buy anything else again. I'm going to be keeping the core set. The only thing, I, I don't like the size of this box. It doesn't fit on my shelves very well. That is not stopping me from keeping it. I may actually change it to another box at some point because most of what I need for the core set is going to be contained in these books. There's a book for each color of the game, white, purple, black, blue, green, and red, and I can keep everything in those. So let's take a look. So this is currently kind of what my core box looks like. Now, the original game comes with boards. The core, the core set comes with these roll-up mats, and roll-up mats are much better than boards, so that's great. It also comes with a spot here for cards and for the different tokens. I'm just going to find a little box for the tokens, I think. And then here, the books. You'll see the books are kind of raised above. The books actually fit in here nice and neatly, except I put sleeves in them. The sleeves are okay, uh, but I they don't pull out of these uh, uh, books as easily as I would want them to. So I think I'm not a huge fan of sleeves anyway, so I'm probably going to unsleeve all my cards. So these are all the tokens and things. I have some cards here that aren't in books. These are the ones that would come with the uh, basically the neutral people. So if you're going to be using the neutral heroes like the dancing fencer here and the other neutral heroes that are in this game, you can add those in if you want to. Um, so those aren't in books, but I do have the color books together. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at each of the different colors and I'm going to show you some of the differences between them. I think white might be one of the easiest colors to play. White has three disciplines. It has, well, it has different kinds of magic. Discipline magic, it has the ninjutsu magic, and it has strength magic. And each one of those, strength magic has some flying stuff. The nin ninja magic is all about having stealth creatures who can avoid the patrollers to get in. And the discipline magic just kind of really messes with your opponent. And so, uh, as we look at the different creatures, I do think that it's hilarious that there is a cute animal out there that heals your creatures. Um, this is one that you know your opponents are going to attack, but again, when they attack something, they have to take time to do it. So if you're playing with the, uh, the ninjutsu, you have this cute animal, but then you have stuff like this porcupine, which has death touch. If it attacks somebody, that person dies. And then the ninjas here who has haste, and this ninja has flying. And this one here is a powerful ninja. It's a 6-6, six, six, and this is a level 1, but it's minus 1, minus 1 for each other unit or hero you have. But this is a great one to throw out at the beginning. You also have this spell where you can summon four 1-1 one, one ninja tokens. You have this, the bottom one here, the strength has an earthquake. It just has some big, like this rock here, which is not very good at attacking, but great on the defense. A doubling barbarian, whenever he would gain attack, hit points, or armor, he gets double that much instead. And the, white, and the white army has a lot of spells that can do different things. The Colossus here, which is unstoppable when attacking a base. So you get him out and then just go for your opponent's base. The heroes for the white army, uh, we have Grave Stormbone, Garrus Rook, and Setsuki Hiruki. I really like this guy here. When he gets up to level 8, he has two lives, which means when he is killed, he comes back. So that's very handy, uh, very useful. Uh, and he starts out with some ninjas, has a stealth ninja, which can kind of sneak through, um, which is a pretty good thing for them to have. And they also start with healing. 
They're very big units here. The Hero's Monument summons an 8-8 Ghost, which is pretty powerful. Or over here, your opponents can't target your units with spells or abilities. So if your opponent's using a lot of spells, that's great. You have a Masked Raccoon, a Ninja Raccoon. One of the coolest units in the game, I think the Oath Keeper of Core Mountain, when he shows up, you basically say, I'm not going to play any more cards unless they're workers, or I'm gonna, not going to draw anymore. Either one of those things isn't going to help you out much, but while you have this guy out there, he can attack right away. He's resistant. That means the opponent has to pay two to target him with the spells, and he can pay two, and he, he can basically sideline all patrol units, just basically tap him, get him out of the way, and then he and the whole army can just sweep through and win the game, which is really cool. And again, these level three things are super powerful. And here's some of the tokens. We, we always get a kick out of how cute the bird is. It ain't so cute. And if it just keeps flying through and pecking a damage at your base, here's that nasty 8-8 ghost that comes out. So that is the white army. The black magic is the opposite, I guess. It's all about hurting your opponent, not helping yourself as much. And so a lot of the spells are just going to be doing negative stuff to someone else. Two damage to a base, and then, but that player gets two cards. Well, that's okay. You're making a dark pact. Um, but it's free to play that one. Here you can destroy all tech 0, 1, or 2 units and heroes that have minus 1, minus 1 runes. That hurts you too, of course, but uh, it could be a way to let the enemy put out a bunch of heroes and then clear all of them and put a minus 1, minus one rune on up to 2 units and or heroes. So you can see that there's a lot of this negativity going around. So there's three things here. We have demonology, we have disease, and then we have Necromancy. Necromancy is my favorite because it has a lot of different skeletons. Like this guy can summon a skeleton. Um, this guy here, my skeletons get plus one, plus one, and then I can exhaust five, any five skeletons and to put any unit into play, which could be pretty cool. The demonology is all about hurting yourself and hurting your opponent. So like for example, here, sacrifice a unit, and then you can do one damage to somebody with the Banefire Golem. This guy, the Black Hand Dozer has overpower, which means if he attacks someone and does and kills them, his extra damage carries over. Um, but when he dies, the active player destroys one of your lowest tech units, which could be pretty bad. So that's kind of what the top guys are. And then the, the middle ones, the disease, they just do plague things. They're all about that minus one, minus one, and just making everyone else pretty much ineffective. The heroes for the black here, we have Garth Torkin, who's summoning skeletons, which I like. The demonology guy who has spark shot and is, can give a plus two, plus two to somebody. And that they get that for one turn and then they die the next turn and it's removed. Or the disease hero who's, again, is all about those minus one, minus one runes. You start out with some of this junk, hit other people, and then you can see the big units here. Uh, this guy here, Zaramon the Obliterator. When he arrives, if you play him from your hand, you destroy a unit hero, worker, upgrade, or ongoing spell. Boom. He's untargetable by spells, and he kills four units, and he's an 11-11. It's pretty powerful when he comes, your opponent weeps. I actually get a big kick out of the corpse catapult here. Whenever one of your units dies, you put a rune on this, and then you can remove two to do six to a building. You're, you're launching uh, corpses at other buildings, or the abomination, which does minus one, minus one to everyone. So this is the, the black army. There's a lot of skeletons and stuff that will come with them. A lot of fun. Let's take a look at the next color. With purple, we have past, present, and future. And these are all going to have different effects. These are the regular spells. But with past, present, and future, there's some future has a lot of forecast on them. Forecast means you're going to put a bunch of tokens on them equal to the forecast number. And then one comes off during each upcase, upkeep phase and they show up. So I really like these Knights of the Conclave, for example, because they're four fours that cost zero. You just got to wait three turns to get them out. But there are different spells and things and different creatures that allow you to take those tokens off. The opposite of those are fading creatures. These are creatures from the past where when they show up, there's tokens on them. And eventually when the fading token comes off, then you, they go away. They're, they're removed. However, you can put extra tokens on them sometimes. And they're powerful and cheap to get out. So you have to keep that in mind. Uh, then there's a... The middle ones, they just have all sorts of things. By the way, you'll notice these are kind of like the Protoss from StarCraft. I really feel like that was what they were going for. Uh, you, here's the three heroes for them. We have Veer, Garborean, Prin, Pasternak, and Max Geiger. I'm not going to worry about them. This guy's a fading hero, 
um, while this guy here lets you, the future hero lets you look at the cards that are coming up from your thing and even put out a giant a mech. And even the stuff here, like this is one, this is definitely where I'm thinking Protoss. The Hive Ship is one of my favorite ones. When it comes, it comes with five 1-1 one, one Purple Singer flying ships. And flying is great because you can bypass the patrollers. It's just that if the Hive ever gets destroyed, I mean the Hive Ship gets destroyed, then all the Stingers go with it too. But I like that, so I'm playing with these giant aircraft and stuff. I mean, I'm fighting like a puppy dog or something. So this is the purple ones. There's the, here are the stingers, by the way. All about the past, present, and future. And here's where you can add, do not get rid of this spell out of your deck, by the way, if, if you're playing past or future, because you can add or remove time runes from the different cards. Blue is another one that is kind of fun for maybe new people getting into, because they have, this is not, this is the one where I think the colors may be the farthest from the different magic players' uh, colors, because blue is all about messing with your opponent. Here, blue is, is uh, truth, Peace and law. It's almost a little bit like white, and you have a lot of soldiers here. Uh, one thing blue has is the the truth one has a lot of specter units. Specter units are cool because they're cheap and they're powerful, but spells can destroy them quickly out. So you have like kind of a ghost army if you're playing with them. While if you're playing uh, with the peace, you're there kind of maybe to keep the peace. You have a very cheap soldiers that you can throw out. These are kind of cheap units that can do a lot of cool things, especially defensive here. And this one has that two lives thing that I mentioned earlier where it can come back. And then the, the peace seems to be a very ironic name since they're not peaceful at all. This guy steals from an opponent. This guy draws a card. Here he gets a plus one, plus one. And then he can give that to somebody else. I really like the drill sergeant. Here's the heroes for the blue army. We have Bigby Hayes, Cirrus Quince, and General Onamara. Um, I, I, they're all pretty cool. This guy is powerful in of himself. Uh, this guy is one of the weaker heroes in the game when it comes to just being able to fight. But when he shows up, he brings a mirror illusion with him. And then you, he can keep summoning those. He can have two of those, these illusions out there. And when a non-token unit of yours arrives, he can make one of his mirrors an illusion copy of it. So he can turn those into other units. And because of that itself, I like truth. I'm not sure I like using the illusions a lot. I hate having something that has that fatal Achilles heel weakness that spells can destroy it. But if your opponent's not using a lot of spells, they might not be a bad one to switch to. You'll notice the big creature for all three ones is a griffin. We have the Patriot Griffin, the Lawbringer Griffin, and the Liberty Griffin. I think the Lawbringer is my favorite because it makes your base have flying. Non-flying units cannot attack your base. Well, or, or non-ranged units. Um, there's or there's, there's some creatures who can attack flying, but still, if your opponent is not working on flying, you get this out. You can essentially end the game. Or this arresting constable who can basically just tap another unit, and then you can come out. Or your opponent can only play one, at most one card per turn. Law is fun because you're basically putting laws in a place that hurt your opponent and help you. So blue is a lot of fun to play. Has some of the funniest characters in the game. The poor can magistrate. I, I do get a big kick out of playing them. We're only going to get a quick overload look at green and red because I showed them in my main review. But green has balance, feral, and growth. Red has anarchy, blood, and fire. Fire is all about just doing straight damage to the enemy. It's not about summoning. It's just like the fireballs and things from magic. I like them. Anarchy does those crazy things. Here you bring out two shark tokens with haste and they can attack right away but then they die at the end of the turn. You'll notice that the, the green one is full of creatures. You've got tigers and bears and mantises, oh my, and pandas and rhinoceroses. And again, this is another one that's easy to get into because you know that you just have a lot of creatures. They're strong and powerful. You can throw them at your opponent. Um, you have, like, the T-Rex is just a whole lot of fun. When he arrives, he just kills two units, upgrades, and workers. Really cool, powerful stuff. Or this Eternal Sentinel here, which is some massive looking thing. Looks like it escaped that of Princess Minoke and can obliterate. It's resist and he can even play spells. So the green army is fun. The red magic here, uh, again, like I said, you have stuff that's burning, right? So you get your fire tech and these guys are all about doing damage, especially to buildings. And then we have the at the top, the anarchy, which is like, what are we going to do with this stuff here? Where this guy can boost, he can pay extra money when he comes out to give someone, you, he can trash your opponent's workers and just do crazy things. This guy gets stealth this turn when he first shows up. He's a disguised monkey. And in the middle, the blood one is mostly about when they die, something will happen. 
And so the big creatures for these guys also, you have a big pirate and a land octopus that doesn't even make any sense. And then of course a dragon is the fire one, a pirate gunship at the top. So red is one of my favorite colors to play actually. So there you go, that's an overview of the deluxe set here. Again, I think this box is too big. I'm gonna to try to fit it into a smaller box if I can, but I am really, really loving on this game lately. Um, I think my favorite color currently is purple, future specifically, but I do like that one a lot. But the, you know what? There is not one color I do not like playing. If you said you have to play green, black, red, blue, you know, I'd be like, woo, I'm excited about all of them. Because essentially each time I play them, I'm picking a different type of magic. So there are six colors, but there are three types of magic in each one. So there's kind of like 18 different decks, and that's not even including the mercenaries. And that's not even including the fact that you can mix the colors if you want. You pick like green, but I just, I don't think that will mesh that well. I'm sure there's people who will do it and do it well. I just leave everything in the books. Um, all the cards in the books, it's very easy. That fits everything. You have your book and you're ready to go. You just sit down and pull it out and play your opponent. Um, this game for me is easy to teach. After, you know, once you get going, it's, but, it, but it seems like there's a lot of depth and strategy and a lot of how to counter. It seems like each color can counter all the other colors, depending though on which one of the three you're using seems to be a good one to use against another color possibly, but I haven't got that far into the depth of the game. I'm not normally someone who wants to explore the intricacies and depths of games. I just like to play them and have fun, but I'm having fun with this one and I'm sitting there thinking, ooh, how can I be more strategic as I play this game? Lots of fun. Still putting this one in my collection. That's Codex. Dice Tower Judgment, amazing! <laughs> Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Boop. Boop.